Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Mike Zyko. I'm the head of sales at CoinList. I'm here with Carolyn Reckow and McLean Wilkinson from um, Keep and New Cypher, respectively. Uh, and we're here today to talk about novel token distribution mechanisms. And um, it, I thought it made sense to bring uh, both of these teams in because they are introducing their native tokens to, uh, to the world in a different way than most of us are used to. So at CoinList, we've done a lot of token sales in the past, we've done airdrops, uh, and they are trying two unique approaches. Uh, so beyond uh, introducing privacy to blockchains, which both of your uh, projects uh, aspire to do, uh, you're both also introducing tokens in a unique way with the work lock at New Cypher and the stake drop at Keep. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about uh, each of these mechanisms and um, how one would get started? McLean. Sure. So, <laughs> so just, yeah, just to set the context, I'll give like a 30 second overview of, of New Cypher the Network and what the token does. Um, it's important to understand kind of the function of the token to understand like, the motivations and mechanics of the work law. But the new Cypher network is a layer two network. Uh, it's built on top of Ethereum and it's a decentralized, decentralized threshold cryptography network. Uh, so we basically provide a set of interfaces and runtimes that expose different threshold cryptographic primitives. Uh, the first of those is something called proxy re-encryption uh, to developers. Um, so basically there's the new Cypher nodes all basically provide this service um, whether it's uh, you know, proxy re-encryption or threshold signatures or Shamir secret sharing or any kind of threshold cryptography in principle uh, could be run on these nodes. Uh, and the way that or where the token comes into the equation is if you want to be one of these nodes, if you want to operate one of these nodes, provide the service and basically earn fees paid by users, uh, you have to stake the native new cipher token as a kind of uh, bond or collateral. Uh, so I think some people call this, this model like a work token. So you stake the token that allows you to run a node that allows you to do work for the network. Uh, you get paid for that work. Uh, in our case, you get paid in ETH, not in the native token. So the native token just is uh, acting as this stake. And then it also has some governance aspects where there's a, a DAO that effectively governs the network and all the parameters around the network, such as fee ranges, things like that. And uh, if you're a staker, you also have basically the ability to participate and submit proposals and validate proposals. Uh, in the DAO. Uh, and what the work lock is, is basically the, this mechanism that we've created uh, to distribute the initial set of tokens. Um, and it's different, as you said, from you know, the typical ICO where you know, some centralized entity is effectively selling these tokens as a kind of financing event. Uh, and the way that it works is you essentially stake ETH. Uh, that allows you to run a new Cypher node. And then if you do that, you're able to earn uh, new Cypher tokens uh, in, in exchange for running this node. Um, the way that we structured it, although you could imagine structuring it several different ways, but the way that we structured it for our network is that there is an initial contribution period where you're essentially escrowing ETH on chain into the work lot contract. Once that contribution period ends, uh, the network will start. So all the tokens will get distributed. Uh, you'll be able to start running the operating these new cipher nodes and over time earning uh, new tokens. Got it. That's uh, that's super interesting. And and Carolyn, how how does that compare to um, what Keep is is doing with its stake drop? Yeah. So Keep Network, like you said, similarly focuses on privacy. It's a privacy layer on top of Ethereum. Um, but what makes us different, one of the root things is we're focusing a lot on interoperability for our first privacy use case. And uh, TBTC is the first killer app. I think I bet a bunch of folks out there have heard of, of TBTC, um, Bitcoin on Ethereum, Trustless Bridge. And basically the way the Keep works is um, also uses secure multi-party computation, uses um, threshold signature technology, um, ECDSA, SIGs, but it also has this component called the random beacon, which is used for work selection. Um, and with those two components, um, you'd need to stake keep 
keep token is a work token. Um, and in our mechanism, you have to hold it and stake it to participate in random beacon selection, to run the random beacon client, and then also to participate uh, in the TBTC system. And the TBTC system requires keep, but also requires an additional ETH bond. That's how TBTC works. Uh, you need to secure the Bitcoin deposits on the signer side uh, with ETH. Um, and what we're doing for this uh, distribution, this uh, stake drop program, is that we're saying for a period of time during the stake drop, we're inviting people who aren't current Keep Token holders to come and to stake their ETH for TBTC and earn Keep if they're successful in staking, if they're able to be um, a good liquidity provider for the network, they're able to stake uh, successfully then they can continue to participate in the network and earn fees uh, in, in ETH and um, you know, in keep with, with the distribution as well. Got it. So this is uh, you know, something that hasn't really been tried out a lot. Uh, there's something somewhat similar uh, last year with Edgeware's uh, lock drop. Um, McLean, you came out with a, a blog post introducing the work lock back in March of 2019. You know, what was uh, some of the inspiration for the work lock? And is there something that's, you know, specific around work tokens that, you know, you think, you know, for both of you, this, this makes sense uh, using this type of distribution mechanism versus, uh, you know, another, another chosen path? Yeah, so for us, I think the motivation basically was as we were getting closer to our mainnet launch, you know, we were thinking about how we wanted to obviously distribute that sort of initial set of uh, tokens and the initial stake and basically how we would decide this initial uh, staker set. Uh, and obviously, you know, we were familiar, you know, we had started the project back in 2017 when, you know, right just before sort of the ICOs went crazy. So we were very familiar sort of with that whole scene and had a pretty good sense that that wasn't really interesting to us or, or even really an effective way to distribute tokens in order to get kind of a robust set of uh, stakers into the network. And so we were kind of looking around at various different um, sort of token distribution experiments. Uh, you mentioned one was the Edgware lock drop. Um, but what we were really interested in was uh, uh, something called the Merkle mine from Livepeer. Mm -hmm. And we thought that was really worthwhile uh, distribution experiment. Uh, basically, what they uh, what they did is that they allowed people to essentially mine LivePure token by creating something called a Merkle proof and submitting that to the blockchain. So in some ways, it was kind of mimicking you know, like a proof of work distribution. Um, and it was really interesting to us because one, it was sort of totally decentralized, totally permissionless. You know, they didn't control who could and couldn't mine uh, LivePure tokens. Um, and so it was really compelling on that front. It had a couple you know, issues that they ran into, like it bloated the blockchain, I think it spiked gas fees. So we, we sort of spent some time looking at that model, speaking with their team uh, and tried basically with the work lock to take like the interesting aspects of that, but potentially uh, at least attempt to improve upon some of the, the problems with it. And specifically, um, instead of this Merkle proof, which is just basically this pointless uh, work, it doesn't actually, it's not, well, work that provides any value or any service other than just mining the proof, but instead tying the actual work that you do in order to earn that native token to the work that you would actually do in the network itself. Uh, so in, in New Cypher's uh, situate, or in the context of New Cypher, that would be operating New Cypher node in the context, you know, of another project, it would be doing whatever work, however work is defined in that system. Um, so I think it, I think it's very well suited for work tokens like New Cypher and, and Keep and, and LivePeer and others. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily limited to those types of projects. I mean, I think you can think of this whole uh, yield farming craze that's happening right now as kind of very similar to uh, a work lock or a stake drop um, where they're basically providing, uh, in many cases, liquidity or some type of work, however it's defined in that protocol, in, a, in order to earn or farm uh, these native tokens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, on our side, a lot of similar stuff in terms of um, early inspiration, 
you know, we looked at Edgeware, like you said, um, Live Pure, we were inspired by you guys, of course. <laughs> you guys announced before we did. I was like, okay, signs were on the right path. Um, but we also looked at uh, communities like um, the Cosmos ecosystem. You know, we looked at them and, and thought, you know, like that that's the type of community and ecosystem that we want to emulate. Um, you know, these are folks that are, aren't necessarily as concerned with maybe like the market investment side, but they're really active um, you know, community members in, in terms of like just staking and technically contributing. Um, so we were thinking about everything, like even proof of work at one point, but we did decide to go down this path um, because Keep is, is this work token and essentially it's just the best way to um, that, that we found to have um, a distributed network of good community members, people who prove, have proved that they can stake and contribute to the network. Got it. And since um, there is this craze around liquidity mining and how that can bootstrap a network, I'm curious if there's anything that you know you guys have seen or learned in the past couple of weeks that has you know changed or um, you know modified your thinking on how you guys might want to approach this since you haven't started yet. Well, I think certainly it's been exciting to see um, just because it it sort of validates in, in a sense our hypothesis that people want to earn on their ETH um, and they're willing to they're willing to use their ETH in, in novel ways to, to lock it up, to try new mechanisms. And so, I mean, to us, yeah, we do think that this is going to lead to the best distribution possible for Keep just because it looks like people want it. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um, cool. So both of you guys have talked about the communities that surround the projects and just more broadly in, in crypto. Uh, but looking at both the, the work lock and the stake drop, it definitely requires some technical chops. Like you have to know how to run a node. Uh, Carolyn, I, I logged into your, your Crowdcast and, and got tripped up on some steps uh, once I needed to deploy a lip node. So how are you guys thinking through like who you expect to participate? Uh, what are the you know, different ways that people can uh, onboard into each of the respective uh, mechanisms for distribution? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I definitely agree. There's a lot of technical barriers. Um, and for Keep, it, there may even be more barriers than to New Cypher, I, I think. Um, for us, we need you need to run a full node to participate, right? You can't just give your ETH to somebody else running a node. You're not going to earn that way. So it does take some time. There's a learning curve and certain amount of technical chops. Um, and one of and we're definitely we're targeting folks that you know have done other incentivized test nets like Cosmos and stuff like that. Um, but what we're doing to help participants. Um, have some time and be incentivized to learn how to do this is uh, our own incentivized test net called Plating for Keeps. And we're giving away Keep uh, to folks who get staking early on test net and figure it out. We're giving away Keep to folks who do translations, who write guides, who are community members that help other community members get up and going. Um, and then, you know, of course, there's there's a lot of work on our end too, just making sure that our resources are up to date. So it's it's a lot of stuff to get people going for sure. Yeah, it. It, it's definitely more than you know, an ICO where you just you have a contract address and you send your ETH and you get back tokens and, and that's it. Um, you have to obviously you have to figure out how to basically right now we provide uh, a work lock interface for participating in the work lock, which what we provide is just a command line tool. So you have to know your way around a command line. Uh, there are a few community members who during our incentivized test that built uh, like web UIs so that you can participate from like a, some Web3 wallet like MetaMask. Um, but even beyond just the initial contribution step, obviously after that, you have to, to actually do the work of running a node. Um, so it's not passive. You have to, well, either yourself or you know, someone on your behalf has to operate this node for you. Um, so if you're going to do it yourself, obviously you need some sort of like DevOps or system in type skills. You need to be able to keep the node available on, and online and, you know, well protected, um, and basically servicing the network. Um, 
there are, uh, we do have a few um, partners who I think will, are working on basically offerings that make it, uh, that obfuscate some of that for people. So they'll basically run the node on your behalf. They might provide kind of a nice web UI type interface uh, to participate from a kind of pooled wallet. Um, so I do expect that that, that will be an option. Um, but yeah, if you're participating on your own in a non-custodial way, you know, with your own ETH, running your own node, uh, you do you do need to, to to actually do the work. Got it. Uh, that makes sense. And as far as expectations from the community or, or users, uh, can you talk a little bit more about you know the distribution? So you know, how many tokens are we distributed? What percentage of the network? Um, you know what. How should how should a, a prospective uh, participant be be looking at this when they're considering the other options that are out there for you know they could get into liquidity mining or uh, go somewhere else and you know provide ETH and Compound for instance. Yeah. So on our end, we just. Uh, uh, worked with Masari to launch our transparency report. And that's probably the best resource to check out right now, just in terms of it's got our entire, um, you know, schedule and, and everything there, our roadmap. Um, but basically, uh, when it comes to keep, it's a fixed supply, billion tokens, and we have set aside 20% for the stake drop. Um, and, you know, in terms of doing your research, I would, I would check out so we're working with um, a bunch of uh, staking providers like you know, Staked, Figment, and Bison Trails. And I think um, I think it was Bison Trails that created did some early research on um, just what yield is, is going to look like. So I checked that out as well. I think that they've made that public, um, and it's it's looking pretty good. Um, yeah, from from what they're showing. So that that would be my recommendation for research. Got it. For a new cipher, so we we're actually distributing. Uh, so so most of the tokens, um, the new cipher tokens, actually go to the stakers over time. So most of the new cipher tokens, about about seventy five percent of them, are, are actually mined over the course of the network's life. Um, but of the initial tokens, um, twenty five percent of the initial tokens are going out through the work lock. Uh, we also distributed approximately two percent through are come and stake it incentivized test net. So we ran several test iterations of the work lock and obviously test iterations of the, of the network itself uh, during that period. Uh, another 2% are going to what we call our university staking program. So we've got about a dozen or so universities around the world, like the University of University College London, Waterloo, uh, Berkeley. Um, they're going to be running nodes for the network as well. Um, so we've done beyond just the work lock, we've done several other programs uh, to try to ensure that we have a very strong and robust staker set at launch. Um, but 25% go out through the work lock. Um, in terms of uh, where you allocate your ETH, I think it's, I think that's one thing that's been super interesting, um, not just between you know, keep a new cipher, but also all the other protocol, protocols that are like comp that are starting to do like this yield farming thing or turning ETH essentially into this uh, productive asset, which I think is a really interesting phenomenon. Um, you know, whether you should put that into the stake drop or work lock or you know curve or anything else uh i, I can't answer for you I, I think those all all those different models sort of require different things and have different risk profiles um for that eth so in, in our in keep the new cypress case you actually have to run a node where in some of the other sort of liquidity provisioning protocols you might just sort of be passively providing that eth um so i think uh probably the, the hurdle for participating in a work lock or a stake drop are probably higher than just passively putting it into you know, some of these automated market makers, for example. Um, so it maybe not only depends on sort of what you think the return profile is going to be, but what your skills, uh, what your skill set as a, you know, as a participant is. Mm. And I'll also add, um, you reminded me, so in addition to the 20% for the stake drop, about 2% of the supply has gone or is it going to go to playing for keeps. So the incentivized test net that's happening right now. Um, and then also we've got an additional 5% that we've put aside mm -hmm. for TBTC liquidity rewards, which we haven't really announced yet. That's coming soon mm -hmm. information about exactly what that's going to be. 
but um, it's going to be a mix of the types of liquidity rewards that you're used to seeing if you're you know big into DeFi and you're yield farming out there. Um, but also some interesting stuff for folks that are maybe less technically DeFi proficient. Maybe if you have Bitcoin, uh, there'll be a way to, to use that and uh, get some, some key liquidity rewards as well. That's awesome. Uh, you, you, you both have mentioned the incentivized test net a number of times. Um, you know, during the incentivized test net, any key learnings as it relates to distribution that came out of it, any discoveries, vulnerabilities, things that people saw like, oh, this doesn't you know, quite work the way it was expected to, uh, or has been pretty smooth and kind of moving forward as planned. Yeah, so for, for us in our incentivized test net, like going in, we had a couple uh, specific goals. So, so one was, um, obviously to, to provide a way for people to earn new tokens based off of merit as opposed to, you know, having a lot of capital. Um, so basically, particularly people that maybe are smaller stakers, uh, so maybe not these large professional staking operations, although of course we had a lot of those folks participate as well. Um, so that was one goal. Another goal was uh, not to make it like a kind of competitive type test net, like some of the, uh, some of the other incentivized test nets we've seen, but more as a, like a a way to prepare and to train node operators for mainnet so that we can have as much of like the learning and the iteration and the mistakes in terms of like people spinning up their nodes and joining that work happening during testnet where the stakes are obviously much lower versus right during like the sort of that initial mainnet period. Sure. So we are, are optimistic that the work we did there, like having everyone spin up nodes and join the network for more or less at the same time will make like the actual main net uh, transition a lot smoother. Um, so we wanted to concentrate kind of like the, that learning period there. And obviously the other third piece was we wanted just to, to stress test the network and see how it operates at scale. So I think during the incentivized test net, like it, at peak, there was something like a thousand low, low 1000 uh, nodes um, operating at once, which was a pretty significant number. And so it was really interesting to see, you know, what were kind of the, the breaking points um, in terms of, of actual like learnings that impacted what we you know, like or changed what we were planning to do, uh, we did several iter test iterations of the work lock on testnet. Mm -hmm. And there were some interesting sort of edge cases that under like the, the way we had currently basically structured the work lock, some weird edge cases could potentially result in somewhat skewed uh, token distributions through the work lock where like a, you know, a whale or someone who did like these not a tax, but like if they tried to game the work lock, they could potentially uh, earn a disproportionate share of new tokens. Um, so we kind of changed some of the, the rules and the structure and the parameters for the work lock that will help us kind of avoid uh, those sorts of scenarios. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's interesting to hear um, because, you know, us, we're still, I think we're just in month two. Uh, of our incentivized test net that's going to last at least six months. Um, and, you know, of course, there's been some learnings already on the technical side. It's always super helpful to just get going on test net and uh, work out, out some of those kinks. Um, but I think for us, um, since our incentivized <laughs> test net is not just about staking on test net, we're also um, including other contributions. Um, we're mm -hmm. asking every month, it changes a little bit what we're asking for. We're always baseline. We want people to get on testnet and to stake. That's the priority. But some months we've got a judge that's interested in, you know, um, this month we've got Spencer Noon that really wants to see um, data and metrics, like build some cool dApps or some interfaces that show us what's happening on TPTC or Keep. Um, you know, we've got other judges down the line that want to see different types of TBTC or keep um, dApps. We've got folks that are interested in um, documentation and uh, translation. So, like, let's reach other international communities. Um, and so that's been, I think, great in terms of just building community. But then there's also the balance of, you know, making sure that the rewards distribution really hit what... Um, is the heaviest, most important thing for us, which is staking successfully for the health of the network. So it's, yeah, it's just been learning process as we we roll out this, this incentivized test net that has these different levels. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely an experiment. And I'm curious if you guys are, you know, if you had to kind of predict, uh, are there teams kind of reaching out to you that are looking to explore something similar? Or do you find that, um, you know, or you think that this is this is a, a new approach that more teams are going to be utilizing uh, moving forward based on maybe feedback you've gotten directly? Yeah, so I won't name any specific teams. <laughs> I don't want to like steal their thunder, but I know sure. that there are several other kind of like sim networks that are similarly situated or architected as, as New Cypher and Keep that are sort of looking at similar types of um, work lock or stake drop style uh, distributions. Um, and then, you know, obviously like I think the most notable example is just De DeFi as a whole. I think there's been, you know, sure. tons of examples of this yeah. happening sort of as we speak. Um, which is getting tons of attention. So I think, uh, you know, I think it's, I think certainly like tying token distributions to work is strictly better than, you know, like the 2017 era, uh, you know, public ICOs. Uh, there are obviously like a lot of problems that I th are a lot of things that could still be improved even over and above, uh, you know, what we have, what we've come up with and what sort of the DeFi folks have come up with. Um, but I do think it, in general, it's, it's a positive direction for, for projects to be moving towards in terms of how they do their, their token distributions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, won't go into details about teams, but I'll just say, I think it goes back to your first question around, um, yield farming and DeFi, right? I think that, um, this is something that we're going to see people continuing to experiment with um, and iterate on because we are seeing people want this. Uh, they want to earn with their ETH or their tokens that they already have. And if they can support a new network, great. Yeah, uh, you guys alluded to this already, um, but you know, with, with only a couple of minutes left here, if, if someone's holding ETH, uh, they want to get started, you know, where, where should they go? Um, I think you guys mentioned some materials. What would be a, a good place to start or, or send them now? Well, for Keep, the best way to get started is to join our Discord. We kind of have this flow where we point you right towards our guides to get you going. And then we've got community members that can help and different channels. And so that's our Discord. It's chat.keep.network. Um, so yeah, come jump on in and all the stuff's there. Awesome. And for new sites for more or less the same, uh, we do everything in, in Discord, um, discord.newcypher.com. Uh, we have a testnet faucet in that Discord. So I think the best thing to do right now as we get ready for the actual main network lock uh, is that you can grab testnet new tokens from that faucet and you can join the new cypher testnet and just practice running a node. Uh, work out any of the kinks before uh, you know we we do do everything for real. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, I, I'm for one really looking forward to seeing how how both these go and participating in each. Uh, definitely earn some tokens <laughs> from from both. Um, but yeah, it was nice nice speaking with you both today. Likewise, thanks, Mike. Thanks, Caroline. Thank you.